Welcome to another episode of Alpha Welder. We're in Meadville, Pennsylvania at Phoenix Laser Solutions. I'm here with the owner, Mike Learn. He's gonna show us all the tool and die applications that they repair in a typical day. So here we actually have multiple different applications. So we have plastic injection molding, we have blow mold, and then we have extrusion dies. So what we're gonna be doing today, you have two different ribs inside of this uh, diameter. We had to coat with 10 thousandths of, of weld. On these, we have a sidewall that we had to put 20 thousandths on this sidewall, 25 on this sidewall. But if you look, it's down inside of a rib. So when we do this, we're gonna do it without getting any reflection anywhere outside of our welding area. Another thing that we have, we need to add 15 thousandths to the top side of this part. So we'll weld up the height, then we'll look at the sides and make sure that we cap it all over. On this part, we also have to add 20 thousandths to this rib. Again, we have to make sure we wrap around that radius. On this blow mold, we have a couple of different things that are going on. We have nicks along the parting edge. And in the nozzle seat, we also have to reestablish that diameter for the customer. So we'll weld this up, send it back to the customer. They'll do all the machining in-house. And over here, we just have a couple design changes for helping the plastic flow. So they have a little bit of a dam that we need to build up in this area and in this area. So that, that's gonna cover the extrusion, blow mold, in plastic injection molding. So another great thing about an alpha laser is how easy and accessible it is to get set up on a, onto a job and get from one job to the next. So to show you an example of that, we have three different jobs set up. I'm gonna get in position, get set up as if I'm gonna weld it, and then I'm gonna move on to the next job. So for example, on this part, I already have it spun in. So all I have to do is adjust my angle, my uh, point of view, come down in, find it, I put my gas in location and at this point my, my settings are already set and I'm ready to rock and roll, grab my wire and, and hit, get rolling. And then I can move another part in, come down, find my edge, I'm in position. And essentially I can start welding at that point. Or, you can bring another part in, get set up. My gas in position. I can even turn my axis, or my shutter off, my axis on, and I can true a part in to make sure I'm nice and straight with it so my welds are all running in a uniform manner. And the nice thing about the magnetic ball fixture he's using is you can adjust that magnetic ball to make whatever surface or edge you're welding line up with the axes of movement with your laser welder. So like right now, say I had that top welded, I can just take it from this position, roll the ball, and be able to hit this edge here, take the part, spin it over, find it again, and then run your bead over that edge as well. So there's three parts that you can get set up on extremely quick and easy. You have the tilt turn objective to be able to steer your laser and you can get in any position with this. So what material is this cavity, Mike? So this cavity is made out of P20. P20. So I'm gonna use P20 modified on it. Okay, and P20 modified is a little harder or softer than P20? It's a little bit softer, but because of, of the air quenching of the laser, I'm actually able to achieve uh, a little bit harder than conventional P20, okay. just because of the process of using a laser. So another advantage of laser welding is you can weld dissimilar metals. So you don't have to use the exact same filler material for what you're welding, depending on the material, of course, but you're able to weld different steels together. Correct. And what diameter welding rod are you using? I am using 20 thou. 
filter. So if I know I need 15 thousandths on here, and I'm using 20 thousandths wire, so I'm only getting 10 per pass, so I'm gonna at least wanna give them two passes, but a third one just for safe measures. Once I have that done, I'm gonna roll the ball. How you gonna do the edge? Yep. So capping the edge just ensures you have a sharp corner. Yeah. Okay. Part number one is now complete. So not only is changing setup of the parts very easily, but you can change materials on the laser very quickly too. So it's, it doesn't take very much to change the settings of the laser, just a few pushes of a button, right? Right. And like that was P20 mod. Now I'm switching over to a 420 stainless. So all your tool steels, the settings are pretty similar. You don't have to make too many adjustments there. And so this filler material, you're using 420 stainless. What is the base metal? Also 420. Okay, 420. And on this part, you have to build up the inside diameter how much? 10 thou per side. Okay, so this is like a shutoff for the cavity, right? Correct. Okay. So what happens with plastic injection molds is once they wear, so if you think about a river, how the water in a river rounds a stone, the same thing happens to these plastic injection molds. As the molten plastic flows over the corners and edges, it tends to round those corners. Over time, that will cause a problem with the mold where it doesn't shut off or seal completely, and you'll have flashing or plastic leaking out of the mold. And this will show up on your part. So this repair is to take care of that. And so you're able to weld up against those holes without going into those holes, right? Correct. So how far would you say you are from the edge of those holes? Uh, some of these holes, I'm only about probably 10, 15 thousandths away. So it highlights how easy it is to weld up against something sensitive without damaging it. And the other thing is I'm welding a sidewall right now without getting any reflection down on the, on the base board. And how are you achieving that? Just with the angle of your laser? Yep. Okay. Now we're gonna do the blow mold parting edge. So we're gonna go down and find the parting edge of the, the blow mold. We have some nicks right here on the parting edge. So that's what we're going in to re-establish. Re, re so the first thing we're going to do. I was going to say, what's the material of the mold? So the material is 420 stainless. Okay. So I'm using a 420 stainless. Uh, Feller mold. also. Yep. Okay. So most people would think, all right, it's already nicked away. Let's just add the walled wire right there. The, the practice that you should have is melt that edge away before adding your base material. So now that's all virgin metal. Ah, okay. So similar to the last mold, we're fixing a parting edge again, correct? Correct. Yeah. 
And another thing I would like to point out is we're, we're doing this repair on a 300 watt YAG system. We're using a YAG because of the, the way that the laser is delivered. It has a hotter center point and a weaker edge point, so therefore it's easier to get rid of your sink. So you recommend YAG for tool and die? I absolutely do, yes. Okay. And the nice thing about this laser is this is a 300 watt laser and he's using a 10 thousandths diameter welding rod. With that same laser, he can weld a 35 thousandths diameter rod. So like those spots right there are now, now good to go. But all they have to do is machine off the top face and this company would most likely go in and, and stone off the weld inside the molding. Okay. So now we're, we're moving over to the extrusion die. I had to fill in this little rib that you're gonna see up here on the screen here in a sec. So that little detent right there just needs filled up to this top surface. So I'm gonna go in using 420 stainless and a 15 thou wire setting. And I'm gonna fill this area right in. And what's the base material of this extrusion die? So this extrusion die is also a 420 stainless. Okay. So they're using the 420 stainless because the uh, material that they're plat or molding has a lot of uh, abrasive characteristics to it. Ah, okay. So the 420 is harder and it lasts longer, right? Correct. So one thing that you guys noticed on that, I kept switching between lock axis in my Y and in my X. So by doing that, I'm able to keep my, my weld pattern nice and uniform. The more uniform I'm able to keep my weld, the less chances of voids I can have and more consistent I can be overall. So say I had 10 of these, I can make every one look the same. Right there, you just saw us jump over from three, four different jobs. Uh, you can see I, I, I have all my flexibility right here. And by utilizing the tools that you can get through Alpha Laser, it only makes your job easier. So thanks for joining us again for another episode of Alpha Welder. Today we showed you three different applications in three different industries plastic injection molding, extrusion molding, and blow molding. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of other applications out there that we're not aware of and that are not being laser welded currently. If you have any ideas of what applications would be good for laser welding, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks again. Like, follow, and subscribe.